Welcome back to another episode of Apex Mountain. My name is Jacob Lindgren, and join with me, as always, Zach and Tanner. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. Doing very well. Awesome. All right. First first movie is Tombstone, which is Zach's pick. Zach, tell us a little bit about it. All right. So, Tombstone. Uh, I'd watched this movie a long time ago. Uh, knew he was in it. Knew a lot of people were in it. Um, and I'm, I like a lot of Westerns for whatever weird reason. And uh, okay. Tombstone, I, I actually did a, like a case study when I was in – I was in college uh, about the uh, shooting at the OK Corral. So I, I knew a little bit about the story anyway. And I was like, I thought it would be a good one to uh, to see him in a Western, kind of different, maybe a different scene. Um, however, after watching the movie, uh, I'll, I'll go on record saying that I don't think this is a Bill Paxton movie uh, <laughs> at all. So uh, my memory did not serve it. me well. He's in it. He's in it. Um, so that was about a hundred other people. Yeah. So listen, it was a good choice regardless. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed the movie. <laughs> I mean, definitely, yeah. definitely did not, you know, hate the movie. So yeah. I, I uh, really wanted to thank you for even picking it because this is one of those movies and I have a ton of them where I know I'll like it. I know I'll want to watch it and there's a ton of great people in it, so it can't possibly be bad, but I just, I, I never think I'm going to be in the right mood for it and you actually picking it and making me watch it. This movie fucking rocks. You've never seen it? Never seen it. What? I know. I know. And it's awesome. It's one of my favorite movies now. Right? I was standing up for half of it. <laughs> I love this movie also. Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely not so much a uh, Bill Paxton movie, but I think that's fair with Aliens too. I mean, he's... Yeah. he's yeah. And, I was, and I was actually talking to my, uh, my grandpa about this too. There's some actors that... You know, they're not going to run, be the head guy in, in many movies at all. But you know when you see their name on the casting list that that, that at the very least, that role is locked up. I feel like yeah. that with Ed Harris. I feel like that was with, with a lot of people. Um, and he's definitely one of them. And this movie was so much fun. Um, I'm surprised on how many people are in it, too. Um, I feel like we, we won't do enough justice because there's people who have been in Westerns for, like, 60 years that were in this. And they don't mean a lot to me, but I'm sure I'm sure uh, Western fans just absolutely love this movie. Yeah. Um, I looked up the budget for this first thing after I watched it because I figured this is a freaking billion-dollar movie because of how many people are in it. And it's only it was only a $25 million budget, which doesn't make any sense to me. Um, mm. Twister, which we'll talk about in a minute, was almost a hundred million. So <laughs> I <Wow>. don't. <laughs> what are the, what's drop, the year difference on those? Three years. Uh, Twister came out in '96, and Tombstone came out in '93. Mm. Um, Twister destroys a bunch of stuff. Maybe that has to do with it. Yeah, I yeah, think they the really did effects. drop a lot of equipment. I think they did kind of keep it. I mean, they definitely had green screens and stuff that you can see in the movie, but. Yeah. Um, they did drop tractors to see what would happen and things like that. So yeah. um, they were ruining machinery. So that adds up. Yep. <laughs> um, just looking at everything. I guess we should just jump straight into saying what we sure. think about the cast because there's so many people. Um, what did you guys think of how everyone else did? Well, uh, I, thought, I thought the main character obviously did a great job along yeah, with Kurt. Uh, Kurt Russell and mm -hmm. and Val Kilmer and I mean we'll talk about him too but I think <laughs> you could really argue that almost every other character in this movie had more uh, <laughs> lines and acting and everything else involved I think I I think this one he had even less of a role than he did in Aliens I yeah. thought Aliens he actually had a, a bigger role he talked but, a little more in Aliens yeah you might be this a one... bit hard on yourself i i mean he's definitely he's definitely in it and he's one of the brothers and he's one of the only people we care about that dies i mean he is important yeah he's yeah he's yeah. he's like the the third wheel of the brothers yeah yeah <laughs> right yes. which he's uh, got some cool like lines and like where he's you know, got to interact with his brothers and he's got to like choose sides with his brothers. And he's talking mm -hmm. about how, like, I'm going to go wherever my brothers go and I'm going to support whatever my brothers support. Like, I get, like, he had an important role and that's an important line and that discusses 
I mean, it's not like this was a fictional movie either. I mean, I'm sure there's some fiction in it. There definitely there, is. There but, is, but they they did very well at making it as factual well. as they could. Very well. Like yeah, I said, I, like I have the court case uh, transcripts of like step by step that every single person involved in the OK Corral shooting, like what they did, and it was down to almost a T. Like they did <laughs> wow. a very good job. Well, maybe so. we should drop that in, uh, drop that on our socials or something. Give somebody, give yeah, everybody I can, something. I can get that read. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't research and make sure every little part of this is accurate. I know from um, what I did look up that they did take some liberties, but I mean, this is a, I mean, this is trying to be fun. You can tell from the very beginning of the film that the actors are having a good time. Yeah. Like I'm sure Kurt Russell is trying to hold back laughing, <laughs> and slapping <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton across the face four times. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're having fun and like I have, I have some notes about it being inaccurate here and there, but um, it's really not the point. I think I'm that sure. if they were to have left out one part, though, um, you know, the end after they show they got married and you know he's running off with with the the girl he's been flirting with, and um, the it kind of pans out, and the narrator says, "Well, and they lived and they stayed together for forty seven years, and this and that <laughs> happened, and blah blah blah." they're kind of in a hard place because it's based on real people. So you kind of have to have that in order yeah. to be honest. But at the same time, when you hear that as a listener, as a, as a viewer, sounds like a fairy tale. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I would almost argue, I would almost argue the opposite because if I watch something that isn't historically accurate and then you give me the aftermath, I now believe everything you showed me and it's not necessarily true. So, um, you know, it's just kind of a tough place for them because they kind of had to do it. But at the same yeah. time, it kind of, well, what I, what I meant by fairy tale is like, and they lived happily ever after, like that. Right. Kind of yeah. They never, or what? What was the line that they said? And they, I don't know. They were, they never left each other's side or something. I think is what what it said. I'll tell you one thing. Val Kilmer is my favorite in this movie yeah. by far. He was amazing. I loved it. I didn't even recognize him at the beginning. I, like yeah. he looks incredible. He acted incredible. He um, looks sick, which is the point. He looks awful yeah 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 that was that was he gets he gets the best acting award i think for for sure his voice is like just soothing it's so cool i looked i looked into that a little bit and val actually made that decision on his own he uh he picked the accent he he i mean the guy was an intellectual so he kind of already knew that going into it but um his kind of attitude and southern charm was his decision yeah. um, and i think it was a good one because you do one thing a little too wrong and he sounds like a complete idiot yeah but he did it and he towed the line so well it was so he was awesome every second that doc holiday was on the screen uh, yeah i was completely drawn in yeah definitely um just a couple more like quote unquote facts about it. They almost all the props that are in it are authentic. They didn't half mm-hmm. they didn't half ass anything from window signs, window dressings to um to uh satchels and dress wear and everything. Um also obviously Tombstone's a real place in Arizona. Um they yeah. made it look a little bit more traditional western um by making everything kind of like wood structures when in reality it was so new at that point in time. It was mainly just tents and adobe buildings. But, um, you know, they kind of, you know, salooned it up and made it look a little right. bit more like what we're used to. Classic Western. Yep. Um, a sidebar was John Wayne's, this is like a weird connection. John Wayne's high school football coach was friends with either, either Wyatt himself or a friend of Wyatt's. So he told John Wayne's stories about Wyatt Earp and then he molded Betrayed it. Yes, he molded wow. his acting career on Wyatt Earp, which I thought was That's pretty neat. cool too. I can't That's remember awesome. if this was in the movie or if I read it. Do you know why they went to Tombstone? Just to live the straight and narrow, I guess. I think Somebody had found movie. silver there. There was a silver. Oh, yeah. uh, um, Wyatt Earp went to go search for silver, essentially. He right. had done his time you know, in uh, Kansas. Yeah, wherever it is, and actually, Doc Holliday saved his life, and in, in in either some somewhere up northern, yeah. and maybe it was Kansas, and then that's how they knew each other whenever they came to town. Yeah, so there's a there's a whole other movie unrelated to this, uh, the called one with, called Wider with yeah. Kevin Costner, 
came out the same year. Is it right? Is it Kevin Costner? Yes, Kevin Costner. That? Yeah, mm-hmm. and that one explains the beginning part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and that's how they they all knew each other back then, and and everything. Gotcha. That's how he, like a lot of law enforcement people, like have a poster of have the poster of Tombstone like up in their office because it's like oh it's the first federal marshals like yeah yeah big deal like I knew a guy that worked at the Illinois State Police Academy that had the poster signed by all the actors like it was a wow re- pretty impressive uh, and not just one that was like he's like I actually took this to something and I I crossed the country to get everybody to sign it and everything so Dang. yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah. And I was also going to bring up Costner's movie. Um, it's kind of regarded as the much slower three hour documentary feeling. Yeah. You know, it's accurate, but it's it's about wider. But um, you know, it it, it it lacks the Hollywood pizzazz that this one is just soaked with. Have you guys so, seen have either of you seen that one? I've seen I that. have not. I have not either. You said you have, Zach? I have. I like this one better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, because I like Kevin Costner. But. Yeah. I read somewhere that it was supposed to be a docu series, like a six, seven episode kind of breakdown, easier, easily digestible movie. And then right up Kevin, his alley. <laughs> and then Kevin Costner was like, mm, "I do enough of that. Let's do a three yeah. hour. Let's do a three hour banger six months after Tombstone." And they're like, "Okay." Yeah. Hatfields we'll and McCoys it. and Yellowstone. He doesn't need it anymore. Yeah. Right. Maybe we'll do Yellowstone someday. We should definitely do Yellowstone. Fans, listeners, let us know. Is that something you want to hear? You want us we, to do it? Check we watch out. we watch the first <laughs> season of Yellowstone and then review it. Check's book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not watching anything for free except for all the movies we pick every week. Just one yeah. buck. <laughs> Especially because I'd, I'd have to pay to watch that one. <laughs> yeah, I would too. So Maybe maybe a couple bucks. I don't know. Speaking of, and this is just a side note, Buzzsprout gave us a $20 gift card. Oh, so. shoot. If for you're, Amazon, nice. Yep. So if you're in the mood for uh, podcasting, hit up Buzzsprout. Anyway, Dude, move on. Don't tell them that. Now they won't chuck us a buck. Mm. Chuck okay. us that gift card. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, just so I don't forget, um, I want to hit the quote unquote fact section of my notes here. Um, uh, Wyatt Earp really didn't want, and I guess it shouldn't be a Wyatt Earp thing necessarily, but the actual law enforcement in Tombstone, they really weren't big fans of having guns in town. And when he kind of made a kind of made a scene in the in you know in in the road about it, that actually was kind of a thing with Sam Elliott's character. Um, it wasn't that they couldn't bring him in the town, but they had to basically do what you do with people who drink with their keys. Like, all right, put every put all your revolvers in a bucket, and then you can have them when you leave. Because misfires were very, very common at that time frame. I actually saw somewhere that Wyatt Earp would purposely only put five bullets in his in his pistol because he never wanted it to go off. and didn't want him to, it to be his fault, so he would always keep it on the empty. Huh. Hmm. Um, and obviously, as Zach kind of alluded to earlier, the sheriff really did get shot. He didn't die immediately in real life like he did in the movie. Um, he actually lived long enough to speak at the court hearing. Um, and even himself, Zach, and I'm sure you can you can vouch for this. Um, he even actually said he thought it was a misfire and wasn't intentional as well. So the movie did kind of take some liberties on making that guy look a little worse than, you know. Yeah, I'd I'd have to go back through and look and see specifically what he was saying during that. But I remember I remember uh, like how they were like, you know, we're we're there to disarm them you know, or, or whatever, like, it was very, and you're like, why is that in this movie? But it's like, because that's the justification for them to go and, mm-hmm. and get them and whatever. Yeah. They did a lot of kind of forward thinking things in this movie, not overt, not right in front of you, but like there was women asking for equal, equal treatment. On the yeah. Street. <laughs> um, they kind of made that one guy sound like a jackass right at the beginning of the movie when he was like, yeah, I'm a part of the uh, bipartisan anti-Chinese uh, <laughs> uh, league. And he, the, the way he said it, he just said it like such a jackass. And every, like you can tell as an audience member, you're like, I already hate this guy <laughs> and I didn't need to, but I'm already, I'm already against him. And there was even a little bit of, um, I don't remember either one of the characters, the bad guy off of uh, Titanic. 
um, when oh, after yeah. he gets shot. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought the, the same thing. Hey, that's the bad guy on Titanic. <laughs> yeah, that's all I know him. I don't. I refuse to know his real name. Um, the other guy, when he finds out he's dead, he goes and holds his hand, and it's like this really sentimental moment. And you know, it's so it's supposed to be always so gruff and straight with with uh, with cowboys. And I thought it was kind of nice to have a, a moment like that. So yeah, I thought that was interesting. Definitely. Yeah. So I really want to get into these quotes because this movie is jam packed <laughs> with some awesome quotes. The entire movie, yeah. Awesome, oh, yeah. Zach, this is your movie. What What are your standout quotes? Uh, I'll give mine, uh, and then Jacob, I know you've got some on here, but I mean, my first one, good. just because it's outrageous uh, and just awesome, and right up my alley of quotes that I like is <laughs> "Skin that smoke wagon and see what happens." <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> I mean, uh, that was funny. Man. I was laughing yeah. out loud when he was. I, was I had to pause it. I had to pause it. I was like, no way he's just said that. <laughs> like, that's great. Who comes up with that on the fly? And then immediately after that, he's like, are you going to do something? Or are you going to just stand there and bleed? And I had to keep going back. I'm like, was that Badass. really Billy Bob Thornton? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. he looked, he, he put on that much weight or was that all fake? I'm not sure to be honest. Oh with my you. gosh! I know a lot of the facial hair for for everybody was real, like uh, the and mustaches I, I, too. And, yes, and I was going to bring that up a minute ago and just wow. went right over it. Kurt Russell basically directed this movie. There's a couple people that co-directed slash worked on the screenplay, but it's by all accounts, Sam Elliott was just talking about an interview not that long ago. Kurt Russell was the director, the ghost director of this movie, mm. um, and that's why you see so many completely pointless heroic i'm gonna stare off in the sunset and you look at my mustache poses but <laughs> all, almost all of the face hair was real like wow. Kurt russell must have had three people on salary to take care of that yeah caterpillar. yeah my sam awesome. elliott was born with his so yeah does he age i was gonna ask you guys that he looks he... the same today I'll tell you what, he actually shaves off his mustache, though, in the uh, TV series Justified, and he looks terrible. That's awful. And I, and I hate it, and he's a bad guy in that one, and it's not good. But Well, he probably felt like he had to get rid of some of his charm, or you weren't going to not like him. I mean, he Yeah, kinda... he had to. You're right. But uh, he's also just Sam Elliott, and it's kind of hard to do that. Justified, another great series. <laughs> Check us a bug. Okay. Us a bug. Uh, is there any other <laughs> is there any other quotes for you guys? Or uh, I've got like I don't know. If, uh, if I have one gonna... more. One okay. more was uh, when um, that guy was about to go up to. Uh, I think he was about to go up to Wyatt Earp and like shoot him, and then as soon as he does, he sees Doc Holliday, and they. He's like Doc. He's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, this is my friend Wyatt Earp or whatever. And then he right. talks for like two minutes, and finally he's like. Johnny, I apologize. I forgot you were there. You you may go now. No, that's the part where he yeah he actually stops his shave. I forgot you were there. <laughs> yeah. he, you he, may go he, now. He yeah. was talking to Wyatt Earp and and he's like, Wyatt, you you know I'm gonna come for you or something. And Doc's like, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> I'm your Huckleberry. I look that up and it basically just means like I'm your guy. It's just yeah, like, you can count on me kind of thing. If you if you look at the at that point, he's saying like. Why are you gonna do it? And he's and yeah, I'm your Huckleberry. I'm and then Huckleberry. he's like, "Well, let's do it." And he's like, "Say when." <laughs> he is the slickest, love meanest it. looking uh, dude. I love oh, it. Oh, I believed every second. Of One it. of my favorite parts though is when Billy Bob Thornton comes out there. And Doc's like. Oh, Johnny, I apologize. I forgot you were that's there. It. That's what I'm saying. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of my oh, favorite Oh, that part. He's so oh, yeah, disrespectful. You're right. That's, you're right. Yeah. that's it. So disrespectful. <laughs> well, I forgot you were even there. Um, so another part that it's kind of like the Huckleberry. He's saying, he always says, you're a daisy if you do. And he's saying like, <laughs> kind of like, you, like, you got to set in balls if you do. Like, at the very end, he ends up shooting that guy. And he's like, you ain't no daisy. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. funny. <laughs> he everything he says is callbacks i like doc if you watch this movie i feel like 20 times you're still gonna be like oh my god that's what he meant yeah like at the end of the movie where he right like his, the last thing he says is he's like well ain't that funny right before he dies <laughs> and it's he's looking at his feet and i was like what is he talking about so i looked it up because i didn't make any sense to me and i don't know if he says it in the movie or if it's something that is just common among cowboys of the time was every, almost everybody dies standing up in their boots and for him to die off his feet is like a pride moment of I survived everything I set out to do good and bad. I could withstand. And now I'm dying on my own with tuberculosis kind of thing. It's kind of weird to say, cause he died at age 36. 
Right. But Did like, you know if how... you shoot people for a living, you're right. Right. Do you know yeah. how he got tuberculosis? No. His mom had it and Just he contracted it from her while she was still um, contagious. Jesus. Wow. She I died. was going to say Arthur Morgan, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was wow. I was just getting ready to say, and then I talked myself out of it. I was like, for anybody playing video games out there, as soon as he, it's, I am not kidding. The second I saw him sweating for no reason, I was like, he has tuberculosis. And I looked it up, and I was like, oh my god, Arthur Sh- shouldn't have looked it up. <laughs> oh no, that's funny. But I was like, I know that one Western mid eighteen hundreds disease. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a couple more quotes I have because. Again, Doc's awesome. Uh, Amazing. He's like, I'll have two guns, one for each of you. Yeah. He, yeah. And the, the quote before that is even what I like more. Um, Billy Clanton says it. He's like, Why? It's a drunk piano player. You're so drunk, you can't hit nothing. In fact, <laughs> you're probably seeing double. And then he's slick as fuck, like, Yeah, well, I got a gun for the both of you. <laughs> yeah. He, I want to hear Tanner talk, talk, Doc like Holiday that? more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like talking shit at the poker table. It's like, maybe polka just isn't your game. <laughs> <laughs> I also like that we're supposed to love Doc, and he's so charming that at the beginning of the movie, he's robbing a casino, <laughs> and we're like on board right away. Like at the beginning, it's like, oh, you know, they're just trying to treat him bad, and he's so slick and good at everything that he just wins all the money. No, at the end, he just picks up all the cash, and he's like, I'm going now, and then just <laughs> walks out. Like this guy is like legend. Yeah, that's what he's, he's like. Maybe poker's not your game. He's like, he's like, how about a spelling contest? <laughs> <laughs> is it? I think it's at the beginning. Oh my God, the, the Ed guy. I forget what he said, but Doc's like, Ed, what an ugly thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I stand corrected, Wyatt. You are an oak. <laughs> Basically, every single sentence he says is a quote. I mean, we yeah. could just do this for forty-five minutes. Wyatt's I, w- one of my favorite Wyatt's one. Sorry to cut you off. Is uh. Your friends might get me in a rush, but not before I make your hand, uh, head into a canoe. You understand me? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Oh my! I don't gosh. know why they went on and on. I thought they went a little too too far with uh, uh, with Doc Holliday and uh, Johnny Ringo. Like you did. Like how how far can I go with flipping my gun around and around before all? I love know that. that. I'm the guy that's gonna get and killed. Then like, Doc's flipping I the ten that. the the ten coffee cups. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Easily the funniest part of the whole movie was him yeah. doing the little cup. <laughs> yeah. So, so good. Um, awesome. I also like that basically the whole, the whole movie, I mean, it's about everyone, but it's almost about the Ringo versus, versus Doc kind of. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they really, they hit you out the very first scene after the white and black. They show you Doc Anal, and even though he's a bad guy, from what we've seen, you still love him. And then they show Ringo as this weird, I can recite the Bible, I'm complicated, dense guy that you're supposed to hate. And then after that, he basically just unravels and he's like, I can just yeah. put my gun around. Yeah. I I forgot what role he actually played in the whole thing. And I thought at the beginning, like, you're like, oh, I think I'm going to like this guy because he's kind of the rebel within the rebels type of thing. Right. But then, no, then as soon as they, they he met Doc Holliday, it was kind of like, okay, now he's got a whole nother character going on here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i did think it was kind of interesting like the over one of the overarching plots is doc and um wyatt's friendship and kind of how they've grown which i really appreciated at the end definitely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. um and i guess before we stop finally stop talking about val kilmer i wanted to tell you guys he actually p- practiced quick draw for real to get better at it for the movie um and they didn't speed anything up, which was typical practice to make quick draws look better. Like every wow. single scene you see him do something in, whether it's the cut being stupid or him actually doing a quick draw for the movie, it's him doing it for real. No Dang. added effect. And also, and I only bring this up because we did Christian Bale not too long ago, but um, it was kind of cool to see him in kind of a wily, crazy role um, shortly before Batman Forever. Because when you see this movie, you kind of see him as like, you know, he could be a really compelling villain. Just like after watching American Psycho, you could tell me Christian Bale would be a really compelling villain. And then for them both to actually switch gears, become stoic and become Batman is pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty neat. But I'll stop saying quotes and stuff now. Awesome. Yeah, Bill Paxton was in this movie. Bill (laughs) Paxton. Yeah, he was in for a minute. Listen, this was Bill Paxton's week, but at the end of the day, we're reviewing the movie. Right. So yes, yes. Unfortunately, we didn't think uh, Bill didn't, Paxton didn't was, think this <laughs> was uh, 
and he, it's, he wasn't it's in okay. this as much as we thought it was. So, with that being said, and that's okay. And I guess for new listener listeners too, um, when we pick our movies, um, we're not saying that the movies that we pick necessarily are the quote unquote apex, ascending or descending from his peak of his career. That's not related. We're picking movies that when we say his name we think of you know they're it's special to us for one reason or another when we bring up bill paxton zach thanks tombstone regardless of how many seconds he's on the screen <laughs> we also don't watch the movies bef- so, you know before we pick them right some we've already seen but so, some we've seen yeah. but it's not like i just watched this movie yesterday and now i want to pick this movie for it right. you know right um I guess my, my one Paxton question is actually kind of a gripe, which I feel bad about. But if, if your brother gets shot in the arm and you find out he's going to lose it, you know you're being hunted by everybody with a red sash and your wives get shot at but not killed. Why is the first fucking thing you do is to go play pool by yourself in front of windows at night? What are you doing? So I went and looked at that. He, he got shot four months after his brother did. Right. They obviously aren't going to show that, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I was like, I mean, we couldn't like have him get shot in transit or something like more <laughs> interesting than him just playing pool alone. Pool is not a fun game by yourself anyway. <laughs> yeah. Very did, strange. Did you know, I don't know if it's just Wyatt's wife or all of those wives, but I know that his wife was a uh, prostitute. Yes, I think all three of them were, if I remember I, right. I was wondering. I couldn't remember if it was all three, but I know for sure Wyatt's, in real life, Wyatt's wife was a prostitute. They said something. Before they and, married? or That's or, how he met her. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, how, that's how they – and I think they say at the beginning even, like Bill Paxton or someone says to Wyatt, Where, or no, it wasn't Bill. It was somebody like that was in the town, and he said, how do you find your wife? And he said, same way as you, and like yeah. they kind of chuckled, and it's yeah. like this kind of – you know point towards that yeah. and i guess leading into that my one big question for you guys before we move on um how did you guys think about the love story between kurt russell and um the um the mistress if you will was it real first off was That's that, was that real story something. yes it is it is they okay. really were married for 47 years and never left each other's side no i'm saying like he actually left his prostitute wife or whatever for this lady when she left with sam elliott in the movie, he never see her again, and I, in real life, I believe it's the same way. He really does just move on. Okay, so all right, given it's, that it's true, then I think they kind of like needed it. Uh, I guess it was needed. I, I think there was too much like that scene where they're in the woods. I'm like, this doesn't seem like Tombstone. Like if yeah. I saw just this clip, I wouldn't think this movie is Tombstone. You don't like and Cowboy it, Mountain, Brokeback <laughs> Mountain, <laughs> where even their horses are in love with each other. Could you imagine the leaving I've never that seen out? That movie, so. Could you could you imagine leaving that out and then at the very end they're like, after the okay <laughs> shootout, Wyatt left his wife and married a new wife and they lived happily ever after for forty. Well, I'm not years. saying. Like, I'm saying <laughs> it's just the way they did it with like it was really soft and right. really like exactly yeah exactly a scene changer. Yeah. Like, it was a good contrast for sure, and I was and that's what I meant more, Zach. Not like should we have it in the movie? Period. I meant like how no, did no, they no. handle it to you? Because oh, to I me. See. To me, his stoicness and his I'm going to be good now was interesting and compelling. And I was really kind of – I was letting myself down a little bit. Like, is he really just going to run off with the first girl that he has googly eyes with? Like, that's going to take me out of this. I'm not, like, really happy with that. Um, but there was key points in the movie where it felt a little bit – not I don't know how to explain it. It felt a little justified from his perspective. Um, he Like, for instance, and this is the part where I need – I needed this specific part for the love to make sense to me whenever bill paxton dies and he has blood on his hands and he's running out and he's crying in the road he looks over at her and she looks at him and just walks away she's no emotional um emotional support no physical support just hugging him you couldn't get past the possibility of him liking someone else enough for her to be like okay fine i'll give you a hug to make you feel better about your dead brother and it's just like okay i get it now they have do. no connection that's what movies do, though. Like, it, I, as soon as you're going to get a guy who's going to cheat on his wife in some way or some kind of affair like that, mm-hmm. they always have to make it seem justified, justified. in some way, regardless if that's what really happened or not. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. I, I was worried they wouldn't is what I was getting at and that it was going to be this weird plot device where it's like, okay, so he's cheating on his wife this whole movie. That's weird. Right. They yeah. kind of handled it in a Western-y way. They did. That it felt Actually. believable. Yep. Yeah. I just yeah. didn't know what you guys thought about that. 
I thought, I mean, that makes sense. That's what I was hoping for too. I was like, are they really going to have him the whole movie cheating on his wife? But right. they, I think they handled it tactfully regardless of what really happened. Right. You know, but I thought they did. I just thought that that one scene where they're <laughs> horseback riding and they're in the woods was just a little bit softer than what the move, the whole entire movie was. And I thought it was too much of a contrast. Right. It felt, uh, it kind of took you out of it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I agreed. Yeah. Do you guys have any kind of last thoughts on this before we move over to Twister? Not a Bill Paxton movie. Nope. <laughs> yeah, but a good but a movie great nonetheless. Movie. But a, but a great good. movie, yeah. Yeah. Um, one more thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure Doc Holliday shoots that uh, double barrel shotgun three times when he shoots it up in the air to scare the horse, and then he shoots it again to kill the guy that's hiding behind the horse. And then he shoots it a third time at somebody's legs. I'm like, did he reload? What's happening here? And then I don't know if he reloads his pistols quick as he does quick draw or if he just has 15 pistols in his <laughs> coat. But goddamn, he shot 600 times when they were in that street. But that's all. I mean, that's all I got to say. Great movie. Or has he only yeah. killed like one to three men in real life anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of 30? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's give this some bitch a review. Okay. Zach, what's your opinion on your pick? All right, and this is uh, – This is just your opinion. R- remind me. Okay, on my opinion of this pick, I'm going to give it a – I'm going to give it an 8.3. Okay. I was shocked at how much I like this movie. I really like Westerns, but I don't have a lot of experience in them because of – I guess I would say more so because of our age. We just didn't grow up in the Western era. But – um I'm going to give it a solid rookie score of nine. Tanner, what are you going to give it? I had um, 8.45 because I couldn't decide. I'm going to go 8.5. Okay. 8.5 it is. Acting ability from our man, Bill (laughs) Paxton. Knuckles. You know what? Again, he showed up. He did his job. I thought he did great for the 30 seconds on scene or on camera. <laughs> You're too hard so on yourself. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give him an eight. God damn. That's okay. I'm going to give him a six one. He did what he came to do. He did not shock me. He, he did what I thought he would do. And he died, of course. Not like not we thought he would. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Yeah. So, so 6.1. I would have rated him a little bit lower probably, but I did like the part where he's like, He's like, do you believe in God? No, really, do you? But yeah. What happens when we guy? Um, I'm going to give him a 6.6. 6. And then later, he was like, it's all a crack of shit. I can't see anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, Jesus. You know, people say they see a light, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I also was like, okay, he's going to be the dumb brother. When I at the very beginning, he's like, why don't we all just look in this window? When the window. Look how good we look. I was like, well, guess who's dying? <laughs> just take a minute to reflect on how good we look. <laughs> Well, Bill Paxton's in a movie. Ninety percent of the time, he's gonna die. So, right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's over, man. It's over. Okay, Zach, what's the rewatchability of this bad boy? Uh, a nine point two. Gosh, that is high. How many times have you seen it? Two. <laughs> but I would watch it again. I mean, <laughs> hundred. Um, I completely agree. I think this is extremely rewatchable, and I will be watching it soon. I'm going eight and a half. I won't be watching it for Bill Paxton, though. <laughs> Val Kilmer is what I'm coming back for. That's yes. right. That's right. Tanner? Nine. Okay. This movie got an average score of 8.1, which I feel like is pretty fair. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, what brought it down is Bill Paxton's acting, according to us. Definitely. And, and, you know, I think we needed that because if we were to be like, bravo, eight and a half, I don't know if I'd call this movie a nine out of ten on the grand scheme of movies. It's a pretty yeah. damn good movie, but yeah. I think we needed that, like, reality check. This isn't an everyday movie, but a once-a-month movie, I could see that. Oh, yeah. Yep. If you have the time. Well, in theory. Okay. I think that wraps it up. Are you guys ready to talk about Twister? I'm ready to Let's talk about it. Twister. Let us do it. Okay. I'm ready to put my dukes up. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Well, I guess I'll start this conversation with a tangent that has basically nothing to do with tornadoes. (laughs) Okay. So I was looking into this and I was thinking to myself, why is all the 90s movies 
about either mystical monsters or about natural disasters or about aliens or about, you know, end of the world type of situations. Why is it, why, it's, it's like we had the most imagination in the 90s. And I looked it up and I think there's kind of a sad reason why. And it's because we weren't in a, we weren't in the middle of a serious war in the 90s. We, and I, and I looked it up a little bit just to kind of look up the, the details. We were in the Gulf War in the early 90s, 1991. Afghanistan, we started in 01. And we're still doing that. And Iraq, 03 to 11, largely. So I think we were in this window of time where, you know, you can't just do an us versus them kind of movie. That's not going to fly. And they do that a lot now. And they, and they kind of rely on that in our time. Cold War was over. So, it, it, so, so unless they were going to go back in time and talk about a war that's in the past, they kind of had to have their imaginations a little bit. And I also looked up movies to, to back myself. 90, 1995 action movies. We got Bad Boys, Heat, which is what I referenced in The Dark Knight, um, GoldenEye, that kind of thing. 96, you have Twister, which is what we're getting ready to talk about. Mission Impossible, The Rock. Shout out to Ed Harris. Um, and 97 yeah. action movies. You got Men in Black. You got Con Air. Put the bunny down. <laughs> and you have Air Force One, stuff like that. Um, and you, they just had to be more creative. Um, and I thought that, I th and I, I just don't think we'd make a movie about tornadoes in, a, in like a, we're trying to be serious manner in 2020. So I actually looked into that also, and Twister came out, and it was the first, from what I remember, the first like uh, Mother Nature movie, I guess. Like mm -hmm. uh, after that, though, so many tornado movies came out. <laughs> Sharknado, <laughs> man. Well, yep. that was more later, but they had Night of the Twister, which I remember <laughs> yep. watching also, and that was mm -hmm. kind of a stupid movie. If you guys haven't seen that, these kids are sitting in a house, like their parents aren't there. And this guy's like flipping this thing. And his other friend's like, quit flipping that thing, man. And then a little Does he bit make later, a tornado? No, but it sounds like. Right. And then a little bit later, he's like, he hears it again. He's like, man, I said, stop. I stopped flipping oh, that thing. Man. And he's like, he's like, I'm not flipping anything, man. And they look out the window and there's a tornado like 10 feet from him. It's like, okay. 10 feet. From him. <laughs> Classic. Like, oh, no. Was that Bill Paxson? Yeah, probably. <laughs> he was in it as much as he was in Tombstone. Um, <laughs> and I was also going to uh, point out before we keep going, the very first thing I noticed before the movie even started and the first time I laughed, it said it was a PG-13 PG movie and the, the quote for it was, intense depiction of very bad weather. <laughs> How so, many times do you think they've used that as an indicator? <laughs> so I was talking to my brother, um, Nick, about, watching this growing up because this was on all the time and all i think we had it time. i think we had it on vcr and oh, yeah. he was telling me he's like i remember starting to watch that movie because i wanted to watch it and every time that thx theme would come on it's like yes <laughs> <laughs> and he's like oh shit i'm not watching that that was i did the exact same thing i hid behind the couch every time that came on <laughs> for this movie specifically i don't know why but only this one and I'd always, I don't know if they just turned it up really loud for sad or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And this, and that's why I was a little bit like eye rolly about watching this movie is because I've seen it a, a million times in bits and pieces. And that's just not the way you're supposed to watch movies in bit, bits and pieces. But whenever your whole family's into something, you just naturally are like, it's not that good. Yeah. So <laughs> I kind of had that attitude, but I had so much fun watching this movie. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Which... I, I we would be debate, fighting about this, which I debatably think is a bad movie, but I, I loved it. I agree with you. It's just cute about what? And what do you agree with? That you love it or that it's a bad movie? I love it. I've always loved it. I would watch it again right now. But it is honestly me too. If you actually look at it, it's not a great movie. It's white trash Jurassic <laughs> Park. See, is what it is. This is this is where ignorance is bliss. You know, where I don't look too much into the movie and I just enjoy it for what it is. Well, and I normally don't look into it, but because we were doing this, like, we'll maybe get into this later. But half half the time, something happens real quick and Bill says something, his lips don't even move. No, <laughs> no, no. In half of his scenes, he's, he does the same thing in every movie and I don't know how to explain it. And I was going to talk about it in, in, in Tombstone and then didn't because he had his patented scene in that movie too, where it's like a two and a half second uh, scene, uh, just a flip to him and he's doing this <laughs> into the middle distance, just like jaw half out, mouth agape, just seriously staring at the sun. He does it every movie and he did it oh, 50 times in Twisted. <laughs> If you uh if you go on YouTube, there's a there's a channel that um 
It says everything wrong with the twister in 15 minutes. Dude, I it's... watched that. So funny. <laughs> so funny. Oh, geez. Yes. Yeah. He, he is very funny. That was a good one. <laughs> must, must look that one up. Actually, half of my complaints, because I have 12. Come from that video? Came... <laughs> yeah, half of them came from that video. Yeah. Um, but they're not even complaints. It's just like, this, this movie is so funny. silly. Yeah. 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 Um, how do you guys think the cast did? Some weird people popping up in this. Reminds me of hometown, man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why we all like it so much. I, I think so. <laughs> it has reminds to us be. at home, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like yeah. I'm not even gonna start naming people, but <laughs> Philip Philip Seymour Hoffman reminded me of someone very specific, and I was like next to you, kind of. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's bad. Now I want to know. No. Um, you guys both live like well, down the street. I really, from each other, so. I really didn't think. I know what you're saying. There's two yeah. people. Then yeah. one's much yeah. worse than the other. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I will say from from bringing up Philip Seymour Hoffman, it is kind of weird to watch this where he's basically just creepy, and <laughs> in like two years time, he's actually a heavily respected actor. It's I, like, what is yeah. going on? Yeah. Was this one of his first like semi movies? Honestly, I don't know enough about him. I think so. Let me find out. I'll, I'll Food. Out <laughs> Love it. Or whenever he has he has no self awareness at all, and he goes into a city or a town that has been completely leveled by a <laughs> by a, by a tornado, and he comes in like, Woo! I'm like, dude, why are you playing freaking Led Zeppelin in the middle of a town that just got wrecked? Oh man! Like you were such a jackass. <laughs> right, he did. Uh, when did this movie come out? 96. Oh, wow. He had a bunch of movies before that, but I don't, really? I don't recognize any of them though. Yeah. Yeah. It, this was the first movie that got him a name, I guess, for himself. At least for, yeah. uh, for us. I mean, this movie gave him his three named name. No one ever called him Philip, Philip Seymour Hoffman until this movie. <laughs> he's just Philip. Phil Phil oh, hey, he's in the, he's, he's in flop. the Mr. Big Lebowski. Phil. He's in the Big Lebowski. Yes, he is. He is. He's in Patch Adams. He's mm -hmm. in uh, the Talented Mr. Ripley. Magnolia. Oh, Magnolia. That's with uh, Tom Cruise in it. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Almost famous because at that point he was probably almost famous. Hunger Games was the last movie, wasn't it? It was. They had they the did a digitally input. Which he yeah, was they good so. in that. He was really good yeah. in that. He would be a great one to do. Oh, we'll get there for sure. And honestly, we wouldn't do him if he wasn't dead, I think. I think he can you still pump out some The suck zone! <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the suck zone? <laughs> I hated um, his his girlfriend thing. Or girlfriend. Who? Philip? No, Bill Paxton's on oh, The oh, dark-haired oh. girl. Oh, my God. Oh, the, the therapist. We yeah. can get we can get to that. Well, she, what she was was a plot driver. I you know. needed somebody who didn't understand everything, so then they could be like, yeah. "This is a transmitter." But you also needed somebody to hate, so that you're okay with him going back to his ex-wife. I right. was really honestly, I was. I'm the opposite. I thought it was hard because of how like nice she was the whole time. It's not like she was. She didn't just. They didn't justify it that well. The only justification was for the fact that he was already with her before, and they weren't technically divorced. Right. That was the only justification I saw. I look at it kind of of the er of that era, and I've always really been critical with girlfriends and wives because I feel like they're always written terribly because screenwriters are old white guys that do not know how to write women very well. And I thought that they did an okay job with with her because. And, I, and I'm kind of in the middle with you guys um, on this because I think that she was kind of annoying and she was kind of always, you know, kind of not in a way, but you get it. Like she is definitely a plot device first. Yeah. But at the same time for, for with you, Zach, um, I thought that they handled her with respect. It wasn't like he was making out in front of her or anything like right. that. Yeah. She kind yeah. of made the decision to leave herself and she handled it like an adult in a movie like I've never seen before where she's like, right. hey, I can tell you're not over her. You know, I don't want to put myself right. through this. You need to keep doing what you do. It makes you happy. I know my way home, which I thought was kind yeah. of cool. No, that um, that makes sense. And I and I get that. I just don't think that, like, I thought it would played out well because you could argue the fact that if he didn't go see her, agreed. if he didn't go on this huge adventure, he would have gotten married to that gal. Right. Yeah. And then you, know you got to think, too, so, you got to think, too, that he probably brought her 
to some degree to start conflict because he's not over it either. It's yeah. not like he walked up with her and was like, this is not, this means nothing to me. You know, I could have picked the time where she was at the cafe. No, I picked the time where she's going to be out in the middle of the sticks, getting ready to go chase down tornadoes on the day well, that they said is the <clears throat> busiest tornado day of the year. Right. Well, I think she told him to come that day and she'll sign it that way. She could show him the device that they created with yeah. his, his idea. To kind of surprise him. Yeah. yeah. I think he brought his girlfriend or fiance, whatever, as insurance. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna, uh, Hey, hon, I'm going to go... Go to get my my uh, to my, my my current wife, who I'm trying to make my ex wife, out to, with all my friends, my old life. Yeah. Uh, you stay home. I'm yeah. gonna go get those papers signed, and I'll yeah. be right back. But yeah, you can Bill, also you're not be, fooling me, dude. You could also be really boring about it and be like, "Hey, I'm gonna be in the Walmart parking lot two weeks from now. At this time, show up then." Like he knew what you know what you're doing. They both knew what they were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were sitting there, and my wife was playing on her phone or whatever, and she's like, "She's got the worst." accent i've ever heard <laughs> it was almost like they just told her to be like hey sound like a vague city we can't have you be a country yeah. girl <laughs> yeah, exactly. just have a twang for no reason yeah <laughs> which brings me to helen hunt too i thought she was incredible in this I love way, helen hunt. she was way better than i thought she was from from recollection of the movie yeah she's 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 like this she has like this real small town beauty to her she doesn't look hollywoody yeah. and the way that she kind of she acts with her face like she doesn't have to say what she's thinking or feeling you can see it it's mm -hmm. conveyed easily yeah. i thought she did an awesome job what else is she in that she's really famous for mad about uh, you was her biggest tv oh, show what women want yeah mad about you i guess she was on castaway as the wife oh also i was she gonna was yeah I was going to say, too, is there anybody else in this cast that you guys, you know, like, really, that you knew? People more that, like, out? look familiar. The rival guy. Yeah, the rival he guy. He looks really familiar. Uh, yeah, I don't know him. I thought that, too, and I looked him up and didn't know him. Okay. Um, he, he did look familiar, though. Yeah. I mean, I have him right here in front of me. I can just stop stop saying I don't know him. Um, <laughs> did you, do either one of you guys know who Jeremy Davies is? No. He's in this movie, and he is the he is the translator from Saving Private Ryan. He's the guy who stands on the steps and cowers while the guy upstairs gets killed with a knife. Oh yeah, he mm -hmm. looks almost the exact same in this movie, except he has not quite the same amount of facial hair, but he he looks basically the same. Um, and I was I kind of got on my 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 tangent. He's on my tangent list because he's basically this. He's basically just just cowering kind of puss from Saving Private Ryan, he goes into this movie and he's, he voluntarily chooses to be on a, a vigilante storm team. <laughs> this is not a mandatory you got drafted in. You picked this, this group of guys. As soon as a tornado comes into the, uh, the scene with the outdoor movie theater and the mm -hmm. repair shop, the first oh, thing he does, shitless. he's 10 <laughs> feet away from where you're supposed to hide and it's in and, and your quote unquote safe. You're you 10 feet away. He cowers in the van and she has to pull him. Joe has to go in and pull him out. Why is he only in movies where he's a colossal pussy? <laughs> you chose both occupations. That's hilarious. Man. I, so, as soon as I saw him when we started, I was like, he is going to be a pussy. And as soon as we get to the first time where a tornado is coming back at you, he hides yeah. in a van. They do something with a camera or something that he like is like, uh, uh, or something. That, like, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, not that guy. He's either going to die or do something really stupid. Or he's going to kill somebody else. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, accident. wow. So Jeremy Davies has one skill, and it's to be the guy that you absolutely hate in every movie he's in. Perfect. Let's get him on the podcast sometime. Let's get him on this podcast. <laughs> He's probably fine. Hey, if you got if you have a thing, do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Oh man. Uh, do you guys have any other things about the caster? Uh, no, that was it. The I was going to say the <laughs> rival guy too. <laughs> oh right. Um, and I, I don't have a lot. Go ahead. I keep thinking about that YouTube video. He's, he's like, <laughs> whenever they they whip it real quick and turn down that dirt road, and then the rival team's like, I think they turn here, boss. He's like, yeah, go ahead and turn. He's like, yeah, you just spotted those fresh tracks on the road. <laughs> there was another part where he was like, he's like, well, you just got the, you just watched that guy get sucked up into a tornado and die. 
and then you see him explode and then he she's like well nothing we can do about it now and bill Paxton <laughs> says i've got an idea and then he freezes the frame in the video and he's like oh you got a, you got an idea on how to unexplode somebody <laughs> Yeah, seriously, do check out that 15-minute YouTube video. It's perfect. When the uh, people at the concession stand at the drive-in, or they they go up and knock on it, like, get out! And he's like, why are you still in the concession stand? <laughs> There's a tornado ripping this place down. Yeah, when Joe walks up to the window, she's like, get out. And they look at her like, what? What's going what on? Do you mean? Oh, my God, it's raining. It's like, how do you not know? You're in a glass box. I watched that youtube video like three times oh man yeah it was it's a good one here's some here's some trivia do you remember what movie was playing the shining I, the shining yeah. very nice and it was and lined up really great with the getting, that's, getting oh right. perfect. perfect right when he puts his face through the door it like gets cut off mm. that's my favorite scene of the movie do you guys have a preference more than that i thought the way that they the way that they organized that that yeah. area and how it looked getting destroyed was really cool. I thought that the that suspense, was where the money went. The music, the movie, like I, I, yeah, it's hard to beat that scene. I think. Tanner, I agree. Yeah, I was trying to think of another one, and uh, as I'm thinking about these other ones, I'm like, <laughs> okay, that, it just makes me laugh more than anything. Like uh, when they're, <laughs> they're like all of it really when they drive through the damn house yes. she's like left right left <laughs> right like, are you really helping <laughs> and that was just how those movies were i mean they were being funny and campy and it's something you kind of miss in newer movies now it's so yeah. 90s to be like that well like that tree stump comes out of the tornado and hits them but just kind of lodges under their car it's mm-hmm. like you were just thrown by a tornado and then that semi is flying through the air <laughs> and nut nudges <laughs> that was car. the that was the part where like <laughs> normally i would roll my eyes but i was like all the way in. i was like nice semi helped him out yes oh, <laughs> um <laughs> I, <laughs> do you guys have any quotes from this because i thought there's a million and i feel like there yeah. is but yes i just write down yes, basic do. ones like you know finger of god and that kind of thing yeah you know, i i like the where they're where the three of them are in the car um and melissa the girlfriend is in the back seat like on the phone and she's like she's like i gotta go julia we got cows and then she says something about uh like some guy's penis or something and she's then, like you didn't marry his or she didn't marry your penis she, yeah, okay yeah. she didn't marry only your penis <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was funny like those lines that she's like we got a cow we got another cow no actually i think that was the same cow <laughs> That's what made me think of Sharknado was when you see a cow fly by and it slows down just to go. I'm like, that's like literally what happens with the shark. My favorite part. They're just like, maybe we can go to that one town and Philip Seymour Hoffman's like, food. (laughs) Food. (laughs) Oh my God. He is the dumbest character. Oh. What uh, really? I really enjoyed him in this. I no, mean, like, that's I think that's what he means. Way. Yeah, oh, like, okay. The the silly guy, Just the silliness of it. Yeah, it was that good. humor I like that. is very of its time too. I don't think that they'd put him in in that same way because it'd be like, okay, we get it. Yeah, like, no, that's a ninety you know, thing. <laughs> it is like that dumb humor, that kind of thing that we that we talked about before, like with you not really liking the other guys, like. Those movies kind yeah. of had that dumb humor feel that we're kind of yeah. aging out of at this point in time, but like '90s is peak dumb humor. I yeah. Love the straw he has from the top of his his van, <laughs> right into his mouth. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I think. I think there's a difference too between like a movie like The Other Guys, where the entire movie is like that, versus just one character in a movie. Yeah. I think yeah. it was a good accent to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we were sitting there, and my wife was she looked at the camper in the back of his truck, and she's like, "Does he live in that?" And I was like. That's a good point. He probably does. Oh, one hundred percent. He lives in that thing. One hundred percent. That guy is for sure homeless. You never think about that though. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you who the other guy that reminds me. I'm kind of backtracking the characters. Um, the guy that always had the sidekick with him, and they were the map guy and the radio guy. Mm. Um, I think mm. he's in Speed, or another. Oh, okay. Another movie. Um. Mm. I feel like I've seen him familiar before. There was also a couple people in this movie that's like brothers of famous people. Like I looked at the oh, really? look, yeah, like I and I shouldn't say that because I don't have that information available to me. But when I saw people's <sighs> faces, I was like, You look like something I've seen. And then I looked them up and they're the brother of like, wow, we got like three Casey Afflecks in here. <laughs> um but uh 
Yeah, I have my I have my uh, gripes slash jokes slash facts. Half of them are from that YouTube video. Um, <laughs> I better I better I better jump in those pretty quick. Yeah, the yeah, first, go ahead. The first one, um, beginning of the movie, Doppler system not invented yet. It was invented in 1974, and the beginning flash the flashback was in '69. Nice. So that wouldn't have been that wouldn't have been something that he could saw on the nice. TV time. And I didn't write this down, but like, dude, get a better lock. You live in Kansas. What is going on? Well, with it's that it's funny lock? that he gets blown away and his daughter 10 feet away is just fine. And she's like, I'm going to walk towards him. And the mom's so shocked. She's not holding that kid. I'm like, will you just like sit on her? Why is she walking out into the storm? Um, and the first, and this is what bothered me. And then he says it in the video too. Um, the first scene of Joe where she's not signing the paper, she moves her class ring from her left to right hand. And I'm like, I thought maybe she was supposed to move her wedding ring. And then Helen Hunt just didn't. Mess- grab the wrong but thing. like what i don't understand what that means like what does moving the class ring mean and then i think she was trying to hide her wedding ring maybe like yeah. underneath it yeah yeah well if that's the case it didn't work because bill Paxton <laughs> sees it immediately um i just thought that that was kind of weird um and then three for for me and i stole this straight from the video he's like why don't we just use a catapult like this movie would be two seconds long if you just flung the sensors at the tornado <laughs> instead of parking your truck underneath it well also he's like so they fall over and that's whenever she's having the scene about her dad and stuff and uh-huh. he's like why wouldn't that still get picked up by the tornado like just because it's on they the say ground over and over again it's too light like, I think they tried to hammer that home because they no. say, like, there's too light. It won't ever get picked up. And they just kind of blow around on the ground. They don't actually lift. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And they said it, like, three or four times in the movie. So I, I, thought, it meant, I thought it meant the Dorothy itself. Like, the right. holder was too light. And that's, and that's a big question, too, for Dorothy. Like, it took him three minutes of levers and straps to get it ready, and he didn't do it in time. And that's when he had, like, the you, you can't bring your dad back speech. But it, when she went back to do it, she jumped through the window, two flipped seconds. two switches, and got right back in the truck, no problem. Yep. And at the same time, if you even step back from that, what are these switches for? Why is there any tech in Dorothy at all? She's basically just an oversized tin can that holds what you actually need, which is the sensors. <laughs> what technology is there? It's not like it's collecting the data because if it is, you're only going to get it for 20 seconds because that thing's going to get thrown a mile and a half away. No, they get the data out of the van. I think some exactly. things is to allow the doors to open when it's ready. And also, Just... I think the giant alarms is to let you know like it is on so that way you know it's not like, oh, shit, did I flip the switch? That's, like, it's that's on. the point because Dorothy is supposed incredibly... to get sucked up because it's heavy. Dorothy gets sucked up and then it opens right. while it's right, in. Right, right, right. I'm not, yeah. I'm not arguing about that. I'm saying, why don't you just, okay, we're right there. Why don't we just take the top off and hook it open or okay. don't have a top on it at all and then just put it out and let it get taken up? Why, oh, is, there like, why yeah. is there like 15 steps for Bill Paxton? Right. It doesn't, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, That's I know a good question. It, That's a great question. And we need to call the World Weather Association and tell them that they jacked up. And- WWA. Yeah. World Weather Association. Let's look I don't up. know. I don't know if you guys noticed the villains, the villains version of Dorothy, but why are their sensors square? Like I know you're you're the villains and you got and your guys' stuff has to look evil, but like we all know that like squares aren't aerodynamic at all. Why would you use squares? How are they made of jello? Like I, okay, that would make more sense than <laughs> what I thought, which was that's not aerodynamic at all. You're just being a jackass if you're like, yeah, let's make them square. Well, I got a feeling they're like in the room and they're like, all right, as directors, we got to have a little bit different, right? Yeah. He stole it, but he didn't 100% steal it. You're right. What's the okay. opposite of a sphere? Let's get I a d- box. I do have another quote and now I'm going to I'm gonna butcher it, but it's back <laughs> when he sees him with the Dorothy and he's like, oh, you're a freaking thief, man. And he's like, and they do their little like standoff and he's like, the days of sniffing dirt are over. And then Philip Seymour Hoffman is like, better than what you sniff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, man. That was, uh, Good times. Just like, I'm just like reading all my notes. I'm like, Jesus, I'm just like picking this <laughs> stupid movie apart. Um, this movie would only be 10 seconds long because both the vigilantes and the bad guys would get arrested <laughs> immediately for vandalizing property. How many acres of wasted corn is because they <laughs> ran them over when there's perfectly fine roads, but they're like, turn now, turn now. Just use roads, okay? 
I love half the time they're like, Bill knows where every tornado's going. And the other half, they're like, we have no idea where this tornado's going. <laughs> okay, I'm so glad that you said that because my biggest fucking note with this movie, he's, it, like, it says that basically Bill Paxton is a tornado whisperer, which, yeah. fine, whatever. But there's literally a point where they're on that hill and he says, she's coming straight for us, which I love movie. <laughs> I love movies when everything, everything is a she. Give me that. She, gosh, she tastes so good just drinking a water she's good what is she is that that tree over there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like she's coming straight for us and joe's like can you see it and he flat out says no what are we talking about you see about? the upwinds he, right you see the yeah, upwinds but like exactly so can he like smell a tornado can he feel it from the wind like on his face inside of a car which way it's going to come because if that's the case why do we have the dumb um scene where he's playing with dirt and he's watching which way dirt blows the same time that he's paying a repair shop to fix a spare tire They're like how long this tell me bill about, paxton doesn't know how, <laughs> you're telling me bill paxton doesn't know how to change a spare tire <laughs> I think it was to fix the tire that he had. No, no. He, he bounces got, he the got, tire off, gives yes, it to him. How long is this going to take? Yes. And the guy's like, I don't know, like two seconds because I'm not an idiot. And the guy's like, all right, fine. Let me go play in the dirt for a minute. Cool. Let me go make this lady give me some coffee and stuff. And Hey, you know, yeah. I think you could make a case to say that Bill Paxson should have just got in the back of that truck. And he got sucked up. And then he could have just reported everything back down to him. Honestly, can we consider him maybe like a second degree murder for all the all the people who die from tornadoes? If he can, if he's the tornado whisperer, why is he not at headquarters just staring at radars, telling him which way they're going to go? He was supposed to be the weatherman, and he's like, he's like, I could be the weatherman and save a lot of people because I know where this tornado is going. But I'm actually going to go chase the tornado and fuck everyone else. That's what he was. He was a weatherman. That's not no. He got hired to be the weatherman, and everybody's making fun of him for it yeah he went back yeah, home yeah. and they're like god oh, weatherman pussy <laughs> and he's like yep you're right yep, it's like, you're fine right. i won't save everyone i'm gonna go find yeah. this tornado and you it's guys get killed because of it <laughs> and obviously the thing everyone makes fun of the car or the truck blows through the house on the first floor goes up a set of steps and then blows out the house on, on the, the same floor. store yeah yeah on this yeah so i mean you know you'll have that and then My also thing. um whenever go ahead what go ahead hello you there hello hello okay. hello when uh <laughs> every ahead. time there's a tornado that hits them it's like sweet i hit bill paxton let's stop tornado done <laughs> <laughs> there are so many times where he's dead like dead dead like when there's two water hurricane tornado hybrids that are surrounding him and they're just like nope time to go and they just pack up <laughs> They're like, Why is he not we'll, we'll see how close we can get. Whoop, too close. Or at the beginning where he's like, I got an idea because I know how wind works. I'm going to go underneath this really shallow wooden bridge. There's no way we'll die. And it's like, okay, what is happening in this scene? Well, Helen Hunt's like, you need to go down here and you need to go down here. And he's like, fine, I'll go down here. And she's like, you need to get the fuck out of here. You need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a true married couple right there. Yeah, exactly. One of my one of my gripes, which I actually found out I was wrong right before we started, was I thought the aunt was actually Joe's mom, which apparently is not because everybody calls her an aunt. So I'm going to go with that. But she's got these industrial sized kick ass windmills that to me were designed for the sole purpose she of only moving them. during tornadoes. I thought that's why she made them is she like did. indicators right. for tornadoes. And then when she's watching TV or reading a book or whatever she's doing, she looks out the window. At all it. of them are raising hell. And she's like, well, I guess wow. I'll just finish this chapter and go down the night. If anybody should know what's going on, it's her. <laughs> because then after the house goes down, I'm pretty sure Helen Hunt still looks at them like, hmm, yeah. she probably should have fucking noticed. Well, the, yeah, and then she uses that as a plot device to be like, why don't we just cut up plastic, or why don't we just pl- <laughs> cut up soda cans? And there's not a no single Coke Hoffman, can. <laughs> no Philip Seymour Hoffman sleeps on a bag of 6,000 Coke cans, so why don't we just cut these up and get the... Get it's the, like, uh, lucky you mentioned it. <laughs> He's already chewing them up with his teeth. Might as well just use them. No, it was funny. They do talk about this in the YouTube video, but they're like, uh, the, the rivals, they're only in it for the money. And then it shows this giant Chevrolet across the truck. And there's a couple Jeeps that go by and they only have Pepsi cans for when they cut them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many great points. Yeah. My my very last one was if you tie yourself to that pipe, you're gonna be a human slinky. So I don't know. Yes. You know, you're you're so fucked. 
I love when they go into the first place, which they're they're literally touching the tornado pretty much. And they go into this place and it's full of like all these nice. tools that'll kill you. And he's like, oh, I don't think so. It's like dude, you are about <laughs> to die. Yes. Yes, and again, the Philip Seymour Hoffman has no <laughs> self-awareness because as soon as they get into this farm, everything is destroyed. Everything. And he's like, yeah, we found him. Woo! And then Not this only family that, but is farming. Like, they could have been everything. They could have been, every <laughs> limb could have been spread across, every one of their arms and legs could have been spread across that field, and they come rolling and jamming music. Like, we found them. Jamming, <laughs> jamming. You guys all right? <laughs> Like, what is happening? And then this farmer just looks over this vast land of nothing because he lost everything. And then Philip Seymour Hoppin's like, well, it missed the house. Like, yeah, yeah sure that's what he's worried about. <laughs> I was going to say, he lost his yeah. whole fucking livelihood. But it's all right because, you know, Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton are making out on the with water splashing on them. So. Yes, yeah. very 90s and 80s again where I was like, will you guys just kiss already? My God. <laughs> Oh, but listen, after all my complaints, oh. great movie. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Whew. Let's go ahead and read this bad boy. I okay. am ready, Zach. All right. Your opinion on the movie? Oh my gosh! Despite all that stuff, I still love it. So I'm going to give it a uh, man. I gave Tombstone an eight point three. I'm going to give this an eight. Whoo, that's high. Okay, I. Enjoyed this movie. Did not love it. And I'm not going to give everything a seven. So Six I think I'm going to go with a 5.3. It was what I wanted, but it wasn't any better than what I wanted. Tanner? Mm, 7.3. And I think I like it so much just from where we grew up. We were in the Midwest, that sort of thing. Right. Acting ability, Zach. All right, here we go. Bill Paxton time. Finally. Finally. Um, wow, I gave him an eight for Tim Stone. <laughs> <laughs> when you said that, I said wow, and you didn't, you didn't change it. So. No, you never change it. You never change it, so you got to just stick with it. I'm giving it an 8.5. Okay. This movie's going to get a hell of a rating. Heck yeah. Acting ability on my behalf. I was excited to watch this to see him actually in the driver's seat. Um, he did fine. Not a lot better than what I expected. I'm going with a 6.2. Dang. Yeah, I was harsh on him. I only gave him 0.1 better than Tombstone. He was barely in it. Listen, I love this movie, and I love him in this movie, but it is not good acting. It's just fun. No, but I no. could have acted his scenes out. I'm going to give him a 5.1. Okay. Love it. Love it. I'm waiting for somebody to give something underneath a five. Have we done that yet? I don't know if we have. That's going to be like a rewatchability. All right. So no, we did... have. We definitely have. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles got a shitload of fours. <laughs> and oh, okay. so did Aliens. Okay. Did it? Oh. Tombstone, shitload, I gave but... Tombstone a 9.2. Twister, I literally watch Twister once a month already. So I got to give it a 9.5. I'm going to go six. Flat six. Tanner? 8.9. God damn. God. I rated him low on acting, but I'll watch this movie all the time. I'm glad that I was the personal anchor who averaged like mm. five and a half. <laughs> so, so statistically, Twister, this one's going to lose. But Twister came out at a 7.2, which is that's... almost a full point lower than Tombstone, and I think that's more than fine. Oh, yeah. No, that, yeah, yeah. So what are we – are we still saying? Do you guys still think this is the apex of Bill Paxton? I do. I do too. Yep. Yep. I agree. I do too. I, I think things are different. I mean, Tombstone is one of my probably top twenty-five movies. Yeah, for sure. This is a movie so I can watched it. I can throw on while I'm cooking dinner and not think. Mm-hmm. 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 I. Uh, I'm glad we watched it. I had, you know, like I said earlier, I. Uh, kind of came at it with a bad attitude thinking i was just going to be annoyed by it because i've seen it a million times it was much more fun than i thought it was going to be I'm it's the only movie that. it's the only movie i've seen with him in it as a leading person i've heard yeah. of frailty and things like that but i had not seen him so for me this is clearly his best movie because he's been asked of to do the most yep zach how do you feel about it good yeah Still the same way tech? okay same way 
Tomb, Tombstone, which was uh, 8.1, fell between Apollo 13 and 9.1, and Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, which was 7.4. And then just to double check here, Twister got a 7.2, which is between Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and Alien, which was 6.9. Nice. So I think that that checks out. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Because the movies play such a, like Apollo 13, it's hard to not give that a good score all around, regardless of who you're talking about in yep. the movie. So Yes. Yep. Yes. We did a practice run for, uh, for us about Tom, about Tom Cruise. Um, just to the listeners and um, I'd be interested to see what a few good men landed on this list because I think it's going to take a long time yeah. for something to get higher than a 9.1 for yeah. Apollo 13. Hey, I wanted to say too, with, like you said, you made a really good point before you talked about this movie about the type of movies that were going on and like how the world and culture and you take a few good men, which came out in 90, would we say, is that 93? I feel like two, maybe. 92, I 93. I don't remember. That's again, that's a military movie now that they took right. and threw in that has nothing to do with an active war so much that they even talk about it. And that's mm -hmm. part of the thing where there's no active engagement going on. What a, you make a really good point there about the movies that came out. I'm, uh, now I'm really interested to go back and like research 90s movies. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks. Sometimes my tangents actually get somewhere. That's a good point. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that wraps up this week. Hell and yeah. How can they find us and chuck us bucks? Thanks for listening to an episode of Apex Mountain. Uh, we hope you liked it. Next week, we'll, we, we will be reviewing beep, beep. Patrick Swayze. Oh. Bow, bow, bow. Nobody but Swayze. Swayze. Corner. Um, guys, what movies are they? <laughs> well... <laughs> Uh, he's got a lot of good stuff. Um, Don't ask me. I'm not. He, he's in a lot of great stuff, but we kind of ironed it out to our usual four. We're going to do two weeks of Mr. Swayze. And week one is going to be my pick, which is Point Break, followed by Zach's pick, Ghost. So be, little, be good little boys and girls and watch those movies, and we'll be right back in your feed next week. Yes, sir. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at apex mountain pod why do i say facebook i don't think we really have a facebook yet we don't yet nope <clears throat> okay well you can give us a call um if you want to talk about next week's um movies this week's movies last week's just say what's up check us a buck. Hey, um give us a call like at, a movie let us know give us a call at 307 give us a call at 307-696-2650 we also have a new patreon <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna um, pick some names. We're each going to pick two names. Our wives are going to pick one name. We're going to put them into this basket that Jordan Gill over there is. is uh, <laughs> the basket can be bought. Yeah. Um, and we're going to pick uh, one and we'll put that on the Patreon page. And uh, if y'all want to hear what we're picking foist, then uh, head on over there. Check us out. Um, yep. Again, thanks for watching and uh, peace. See you. Ciao. Can't find my clicker. Bye.